they get involved in chess, if they're lucky, they build self-confidence and strategy and tactics, and, and it totally brings them out. Susan has a big foundation also. She's been responsible for literally millions of dollars going to that. Her story is great. I love hearing her talk. Hi, I'm Doug Goldstein. I'm a fan of I Share Hope, and enjoy the show. I'm Susan Polgar, a world chess champion and the coach of the number one ranked collegiate chess team in the United States, and I Share Hope. Welcome to I Share Hope, the podcast where world leaders share their real stories of hope and how you can use actionable hope to start changing your life today. And now, here's your host, Chris Williams. Hello, Susan. How are you? Hi, doing good. And you? Doing very well. It's great to talk to you. Same here. Did, uh, did the information I send you, was that helpful about what we're yeah, going to be doing Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And I actually wanted to check a couple of things uh, on, on who our audience is. I don't know if you got my email from earlier. I think I did. I, did you not get that? I sent it back about an um, hour ago, maybe 45 minutes ago. Oh, I, I didn't see a response to that. Um, yeah, let's see. Make sure I hit some. Oh, yeah, I, I just got it, okay. actually. Well, hey, you want to take a minute and read over that? I'm just going to look through one thing here real quick. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So you you are editing. It's not uh... correct. We we're really committed uh, mm -hmm. to making sure that these things turn into a production that delivers a clear story of of authentic hope. Meaning, we all have hardship in our lives. But we want to make sure that people hear that, but also hear and there is a way through this. And you can notice on question five of the uh, interview questions, very clear steps mm -hmm. that we translate this into where people can hear your words and inspired by your story, take that and, and do something because the worst thing you can do when you're in a, uh, a bad situation is nothing. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, if there's anything that needs to be edited, you just let me know at the end of the interview. Okay. If you say, Oh, I wish I hadn't said that. It's no problem at all. We'll cut it out. And when okay. we do launch, we'll send you um, a heads up with social media sharing links and uh, address to the podcast and we'll give you everything so you can use it and share it and do whatever you like with it. So how many of the thousand interviews have oh, you done so Oh my goodness. Far? So good question. So we process, process, process all through the summer and we have, um, I think 20 or 25 interviews done in the past month. We, we opened the interviews up in, uh, Mid November, I think November seventeenth is when we opened interviews up. Oh, so you're you're pretty new. Oh, new with the new with the recording, yes. And mm -hmm. um, all summer was spent. We have um, about three hundred and fifty or so interviews that are lined up in the sense that they've been referred to and connected to. Um, some of the harder ones. There's heads of states, the Pope. Um, there's some really huge names in there that I'm honestly, Susan, blown away that you would talk to me. And I'm blown away that um, that we might even get an audience with a few heads of state. Uh, it just wow, that's amazing. By really the way, is. another person I may, if I may suggest, a, a good friend of mine is the radio show host Delilah. I don't know if you're really? familiar. Really, I, I, we listen to because, we listen to her every night. Because oh, really? She, yeah, Christmas she's a dear on. friend of mine. No kidding. And uh, I think she would have some really passionate stories to share with yeah. with the podcast. In fact, her foundation, which I'm on the board of, is a Point of Hope. Mm -hmm. So it's as appropriate as it gets. And she went through a lot of disappointment and hardship and tough situations in her life. Wow. That I think she'd be more than happy to share. So I, I think it's no definitely a very appropriate person to talk to. And, and she's obviously a great speaker. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> she is. So she, she would be just perfect, I think. Uh, I would love an introduction to her. She's, um, we hear her all the time at, in our town, Memphis, Tennessee. We listen to the radio station that plays continuous holiday music this whole month, and she's on every night. And so <laughs> she's become a, a very common and recurring voice for us this time of year, and she's a phenomenal communicator. Absolutely. Um, and Absolutely. I had no idea she had a story that had roots oh, like yeah. that. So. Oh, yeah. She, she went through so many disappointments and failures in, in both personal and professional life wow. until finally she broke through, and we all know who she is. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for her that she had to go through that but yeah. i tell you she's made uh she's made something great out of it yeah she did so anyway yeah uh, good i i think it's best to just actually contact the the official channels uh, okay. you know you know we um we good good point let's talk about that towards the end there's um we 
anytime we go through the official channels, it takes so much of my staff's time because you just go round and round and round. The only mm -hmm. way we take interviews are through direct referrals because mm -hmm. it's, as you'll notice, I'm curious to hear your interview, but I have a feeling that there's going to be a very common theme of relationships that potentially helped you through your life. And mm -hmm. it is in every interview. And I didn't expect that. But you'll find that as we start building these interviews, there's relational themes. And it's one person saying, oh, and that's my story. But I would really like to hear this person interviewed and have them <laughs> answer the five questions. So anyway, we'll figure it out at the end and see if there's a way we can connect the dots there. Well, hey, sure, sure. Now, is this a video uh, podcast or it's, a, it's just voice? It's just voice. We're airing a voice podcast, but I've learned through the process and our coaches have taught us this too, that have done successful podcasts. It's much better to have an, a, a visual way mm -hmm. to interview just because you can see my face and sure, I can read course. the expressions. Um, but I think there's a few cases with a few of these interviews, and you can do this if you'd like, where some of the quotes about hope um, we may turn that into something that could be shared via YouTube. We're trying to make sure the message gets in the hands of any user who wants it. So, mm -hmm. and, and in a free way. So the, um, like a YouTube video, like Douglas Goldstein, for instance, um, there's a, a whole world that lives on YouTube that never, ever listens to a podcast. Well, mm. if they, I, I want to make sure there's a way to connect that. So I'm not a video editor. And at this point, I'm not doing any video editing. <laughs> so... <laughs> But anyway, you'll uh, we'll send you the final copies of all this stuff, and you'll. Okay. I, I promise you, we will make you. Um, I'm sure we can't make you any better than you already are because you're amazing. But we won't we won't damage that at all. I promise. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Now, just I, I, I very briefly so a five hundred thousand number uh, is that uh, for all the podcasts you had so far, or is it per podcast? Or right. What, so what is that number referring? Here's to? how here's how podcasting works. It's a fairly new venue. Um, compared to like blogs and, and YouTube video sites, for instance. So in the podcasting world, there's a little over 350,000 podcasts out there right now, meaning uh, people doing what I'm doing and launching multiple episodes. And of those, very, very few of them ever get noticed. Um, so we went to the best and started pooling um, information to make sure that we got through the best new and noteworthy sections of iTunes and Stitcher. Um, and we launched January 1st and, um, so of we're 2014? of 2015, no, we're, we're launching that's in that, uh, oh, you're just logo. launching. Yeah. Oh, so okay. we have a strategy set in place and we think we should be able to reach, um, based on the estimates that we have, I think honestly, we'll be reaching that 500,000 in January, but, what? um, you're allowed to stay on new and noteworthy in iTunes for eight weeks. And our strategy should get us to the top, uh, list of new and noteworthy. And then anytime someone subscribes to a podcast, they automatically get the entire run of podcasts. So if somebody subscribes to you and listens to your podcast, they will also hear Jake Shumarukuro, who is the world's leading ukulele player, who has a huge following from youth. Um, they'll also hear uh, John Lee Dumas uh, is a good example, a huge following in the uh, business world. Um, they'll hear uh, another lady I'm interviewing today who was the first african-american girl to get into the school systems here after desegregation and her family was the one that sued to get um desegregation moving through in the public schools here so there's uh -huh. you know there's lots of lots of diversity out there um mm -hmm. and i think it's gonna be really fun to watch people connect to uh, some people that never thought about chess champions are gonna be like really <laughs> the world record and, for uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> and about how long uh, the interview is uh, 25 minutes total so oh, okay. we can and it's probably going to be a little shorter than that usually i wrap it up within about 20 minutes but um it you can talk as long as you want but i want to make sure that i don't take any more time than you want to give me okay that sounds good so let's get started All right, let me start um with a quick introduction and before i do that is you i've seen online a world record do you still hold the world record for most sequential games and most wins uh, yes, I believe I do. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do the introduction, and then when I get done with the introduction, I'm going to say something like, and there is a world record that I've heard of recently. Susan, will you give us the details about that? I tell you what. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> let, let, me, let me look up the exact numbers if okay. you need that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> if I was you, I'd have had that one memorized. 
I'd be uh, so proud of it, but I, I think you've done a few other Actually, things. no, because usually most of the time uh, somebody else introduces me, yeah. and uh, no, it's 1,100-something. <laughs> oh, it's funny. You know, the um, the people who follow you and know the chess world will, will um, appreciate all the amazing stats, and the people who are not as smart as you will appreciate the world records. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I think uh, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Well, let me get started here. And if I mess up anything, again, I will edit it again. Usually the edits are my right. fault, not yours. I am so excited to be speaking with Susan Polgar. Susan, did I pronounce your last name right? Yes, you did. It's a pleasure okay. being here on the podcast. G great. This is really incredible. So listen to this. Susan is a Hungarian-American chess grandmaster four women's world championships, first player to win the Triple Crown, number one ranked female at the age of 15 and remained in the top three for nearly 25 straight years. In 91, she broke the gender barrier by becoming the first woman in history to earn the Grand Master title through the traditional FIDE requirement. That's incredible. She's five-time women's Olympiad champion, earning 10 overall medals. In 2009, Susan became the first woman to coach a men's division one college class, or excuse me, college chess team to the final four. Her teams have won four consecutive national championships. Today, Susan is just as busy as ever, continuing to coach, doing the commentary for major world championships, Olympiad. If you watch chess on any online channel or TV, you will see her name and hear her voice coming up frequently. She uh, was just awarded a medal for the best trainer in the world, best-selling author for two books and a new book that has just come out recently. Her two bestsellers, A World Champion's Guide to Chess and Chess Tactics for Championships. The newest book is Rich as a King. She co-authored that with a guy named Douglas Goldstein, and it is about chess strategies and financial investments. Now, Susan has uh, also holds a world record. Susan, give me a little more detail. This blows my mind. Well, back uh, some years ago in uh, 2005 in uh, Palm Beach Garden, I have uh, set a record by playing actually several records. 326 players simultaneously, which at the time broke the world record wow. and I lost only three of those games <laughs> but the record that still stands is that uh, the most uh, uh, games con conse consequently that I played 1131 games 11? one after the other wow how long did it take uh, well, it was actually part of the whole big exhibition. There were some people who finished their games and new ones set in later, which didn't count for the overall number, the original number of the 326. So I played uh, 1,131 players, one after another, and still only lost three games. That gives me a headache just thinking about that. It took uh, all, all, about 17 hours. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we all know of uh, many movies Sherlock Holmes stories, all those places where the chess players come around and they are the most brilliant, most intellectual, most strategic minds. And you're definitely the person I don't want to sit across the table from and try to plan something around you because I'm sure it'll catch up to me fast. <laughs> so Susan, you have a, a lot more story than just chess. Not that it has minimized your life at all. It's been a phenomenal story, but you come from somewhere. You are somebody besides just a chess player. So let me ask you our five questions about hope, and you can tell us more about you in the process. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So question one, what is your definition of hope or the favorite quote about hope that you have? Well, uh, I think a person needs three things to be truly happy, and it's to have someone to love, mm -hmm. to be passionate, mm -hmm. find your passion in what you do, mm -hmm. and also to have something to hope for. So wow. I think hope 
is an absolutely very important uh, part in our lives. Mm -hmm. And without it, uh, you know, you cannot be happy. That's incredible. Someone to love and something to hope for. Am I getting that right? Right. And, and also to find your passion. Find your passion. In what me, you yeah. do. That's right. right because, in the there. because, you know, it's, it's not, life is not fun when you keep going to work every day and you don't enjoy what you do or you don't find anything interesting in either what you do or the people you work with. That's usually a sign that it may be time to change for something different. It's a good point. You know, I, I think our listeners can relate to this. If we hear from a next door neighbor or a relative friend, um, if there's a negative comment going on in their life, it's often a relationship or they're just sick of what they're doing day in, day out, or they have no long-term hope or vision for the future. I think you're absolutely right, Susan. Thank you. So tell me this, who's been most hopeful or the best deliverer of hope in your life? Who's really imparted hope to you? Well, I think uh, instead of just naming one or two particular people, I would say humanity at wow. large because I had so many occasions in my life when things didn't go my way. Just to give one of the many examples, uh, when I uh, qualified for the world championship for the first time in 1986, uh, still living in Hungary and uh, finishing in the top... <coughs> Sorry. No, bless you. And finishing in the top in the Hungarian championship and by the regulations I qualified. And all of a sudden, uh, the decision came that I cannot compete in the world championship because it's the men's world championship. Wow. And the women are not allowed. Oh, boy. Obviously, at first, the world collapsed. And I was very disappointed that all the hard work I put in, all the sacrifice I put in, all the hopes I had are in vain because it doesn't matter what the results are, there are higher powers, so to say, and in the political sense, in, in the chess politics that can ruin those hopes. But yet, I learned later, six months later, that there was a group of people who had nothing to do with me really and independently felt the unfairness of it and fought for it. Wow. From Australia. Wow. The Australian Chess Federation with some others, you know, got together and said, we need to change this. This cannot be. This cannot be the future mm -hmm. towards the end of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And through those group of people who fought hard for the right thing, they changed the rule. And even though that year it was too late for me to compete, mm -hmm. but the next cycle I was able to. And for people after me, it's not a problem anymore. And this is just one of many examples when I, I found that even though unfairness happens in our world, unfortunately, it did happen, it does happen, and it probably will happen. It's part, unfortunately, of human nature to some degree. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think we also see that there is, even though there is a small, very small percentage of evil and, and people who want to hurt others and want to get ahead at all costs and whatever you call it, there is also a group of people who are the voice of reason and, and that are fighting there for the right thing to do without any personal interest or benefit for themselves hmm. and that group of people in humanity i think that's what gives me hope that's what used to give me hope and that's what gives me hope today as well susan that's beautiful and it's meaningful to me there are many days in my own story that i feel like the the world's against me or um the the things that happened yesterday may be hanging over my my head today and in reality, there are small pieces of my world. And you're right. There's always a few out there who might not want to make life the best for us. And in, in your case, truly discriminating against your gender. You deserved every bit of what you were shooting for there. But the discrimination got you. And um, you're also right that there's also a group of people who really want to see other humans succeed just based on the fact that they're fellow humans. So I think that's fantastic. Again, I think you just came back to your three points earlier. There's uh, someone to love, passion involved, 
and there is a hope for the future. And you had some relationships in there and obviously your passion and other people who hoped for the same future you had. Absolutely, yes. Hmm. And of course, you know, it's not just in your professional life, but of course in your personal life the same. I, I guess, uh, like most people uh, in the world, I guess I went through my own hardships and breakups and divorce. And uh, so, you know, I, I know a whole lot about uh, those uh, frustrations, disappointments, when you feel like it's the end of the world, you know, and, you know, he was the last guy and that's it. I'm never going to be able to love anybody anymore yeah. and things like that. And and then eventually, thanks to people, thanks to family, thanks to close friends, you know, that help you overcome those tough moments in your life, in your personal life as well. It's, it's obviously equally, if not more important, uh, you know, and of course in those cases. Uh, but there is hope. And, uh, you know, at first it's hard to believe that there is tomorrow and there is hope. Mm. But uh, I learned through experience that, uh, yes, there is hope and uh, you should never give up and you, n you should never think that that was the last relationship, that the only relationship that could have worked because there is hope. I've seen so many cases, even from people, from my circle of friends, that somebody even 60 years old, you know, has been divorced for a couple of decades and, you know, was about to give up that he'll, she'll ever find, you know, let's say the right uh, person that she can be happy with. And yet uh, in front of my eyes, she met somebody at a dance club, you know, at, <laughs> at a dance uh, class actually. Yeah. And, and they, they fell in love and they are happily married already four or five years now that, you know, and hopefully for the rest of their life. So, you know, it's never too late to, to find happiness and you should never give up hope. It is never too late. That's a great, great point. And you just said it again. You got back to relationships, people to love, a passion, and a hope for the future. Absolutely. You keep coming back to those points. You're doing great. I, I, love I, I, I don't use those same words, but I think, I think that's the essence of it indeed. It is. I can, see the, I can see how your definition came from your life experience, and I think experience is a great teacher when it comes to this thing. Hey, I think you may have answered question three a couple of times now. Stories of your background and how you've had to use hope uh, to come through those things. Am I correct? I think so. Uh, okay. I, I, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I'm, I'm not opposed to uh, mixing up the order a little bit. All right. Question number four is how are you using hope today in your life or in the lives of others? I know you're very involved in some foundation work. I'd love you to tell some about that but also anything else that you're doing that's just simple acts of kindness or hope in your community. Well, I, I founded the Susan Polgar Foundation over a decade ago now mm -hmm. with the mission to uh, give opportunities to young people in the United States and, and somewhat internationally, and especially open doors for girls that, yeah. as you know, through my example, that... Uh, has been discriminated against in the world of chess, which is uh, largely male dominated. It has improved, obviously, in my lifetime, but it's still not quite uh, equal. And uh, so we, we try to give opportunities to, to young girls in the United States to improve their chess and probably more importantly, to, to learn through chess and open doors through chess to perhaps college scholarships or, or uh, opportunities in the workforce later on in their life uh, through connections and through achievements in chess. And uh, not only through my foundation, but also in my uh, day job, so to say, at Webster University, uh, when I founded the, the Susan Polgar Institute for Chess Excellence, SPICE in short, mm -hmm. uh, it, it also has uh, the, the same ideas in uh, giving an opportunity to young chess players around the world and in the United States, obviously, mm -hmm. not needing to choose when they finish high school, whether they try to become a professional chess player or pursue a higher education, but it's a perfect, uh, the best place to try to combine the two to get an excellent higher education at Webster University and at the same time, pursue improving their chess uh, skills and and uh, reach their dreams within their chess careers at the same time. And, uh, you know, at SPICE, uh, we have the number one ranked chess team in the United States. 
Uh, we have wow. won, uh, my teams have won the past four Final Fours, National Championships. Wow. Uh, two with the Texas Tech, where I started the SPICE program, and the last two at Webster University. But the program is, of course, a lot more than, than just a chess program or a chess team. It's really trying to give uh, guidance, give life lessons to these young ladies and, and men who, who are about to embark uh, in, in their, with their lives after school and they're trying to teach them for the right values, the right uh, mm. the professionalism and, and how to approach life at large. What's the right thing to do? Wow. Yeah, I love how you're using your your skill set, your natural skill set as a chess player. Obviously, um you're probably born a better chess player than I was. <laughs> and you've practiced well, a I lot don't, more. <laughs> actually, believe it or not, I, I don't really believe in in born talent that much because sure. I actually I really believe that anybody is it. capable to achieve anything they set their mind to. I think. Uh, I, I really believe that uh, my achievements uh, are a result of hard work. Mm -hmm. And if I can do it, anybody else can do it. I love that. Oh, I love that. It's so actionable. You have a goal out there and you have an actionable way to put it to test. And you're using your ability um, that you've worked very hard for to not just deliver the product of a good education or skill set in a game, but to actually teach other life skills that are beyond the board. And that's fantastic. That's really investing in people. Well, I, I really believe that through chess, we can educate people mm -hmm. lo a lot further than just chess moves or winning chess games. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole point is to teach the process, how chess players think, the oh. critical thinking, the assessment skills, the analytical skills, and perhaps most importantly, problem-solving skills yeah. that I think is badly lacking in our society today with so many people. They lack especially the problem-solving skills. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other three are, are the process to be able to solve problems correctly and efficiently. So that, that is why I'm so passionate about chess, about promoting chess, not just as a game, as a hobby, as a profession. That just may be a side, a side a result of it. Sure. But really the ultimate goal is to educate people, to think logically, mm. to become critical thinkers and problem solvers. I think that mm. is really the key that we need in our society. And chess is just a tool to get there. And so it is in our book that I co-authored with uh, Doc Goldstein, Rich yeah. as a King, where we educate people through mm. the thought process that we use in chess. And you don't need to be a chess player to enjoy the book and learn from the book and benefit from the book. Okay. Anybody can really uh, learn from it. And I think uh, we're trying to break it down to very simple language and very much step by step the right uh, method mm -hmm. in, in how to improve your financial life, which obviously is key for all of us. Oh, yeah. we, as much as we don't care about money or we do care about money, uh, you know, we all, as, as we say in Hungary, we live from the market. And I mean the market <laughs> where you buy the food, right. right? So you need bread and butter on your table. And at the, at the, at the end, uh, it, it, it is important that uh, how you deal with your, the money, hard-earned money that you work so hard for, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a regular job, a middle-class person, family, you know, it's pretty much impossible to get rich mm -hmm. unless you invest. Yeah. And that's whether you invest in the stock market, you invest in a business, you invest in some form, you think ahead and you start saving and, and well, you have to read the book. I don't want to kind of <laughs> everything. But, but really in the book, we try to 
uh, lay it out there through chess metaphors and through chess examples that I went through in my life. And as I said, I'm not talking about chess moves. There, Yes, there are some, but it's maybe 1% or 2% of the book that's related to chess. And even that is uh, intended to be explained in a level that as long as you know the rules of the game, you can understand it. It's not for chess masters by no means. It's really for the average person that... Have has played chess before, maybe ten years ago, maybe mm-hmm. three months ago, but you don't have to be a serious chess player to understand the book and to benefit from the book. And really, it's a it's a self help type of book, mm-hmm. which uh, tries to explain as clearly and as logically, as easily, simply as possible, in how you can better your financial life. Susan, I think that what you and Doug Goldstein have done there is really phenomenal. I, I, my background is finance. I was a CFP and licensed. I'm not anymore. I, I'm glad to lay that one down and do things that I'm more passionate about. But the, um, the, the logic of investing or the logic of financial planning, savings, paying off debt, whatever it may be in your financial life, the strategy and the logic is so important. And what y'all are doing there, explaining how to take logical systematic steps and not let your emotion take over when the hard decisions hit you in the face is critical because usually our worst financial decisions, if you're a millionaire or if you owe millions, <laughs> either way, our worst decisions are usually in the highest emotional times and um, strategy and logic wins so many times. So thank yeah, you. We tried our best. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for documenting all that. All right. Uh, question number five, and I think you're rolling right into it. Give us some good strategy, some good simple steps uh, for anybody who may be in the midst of a very hopeless situation. What are the one, twos, and threes that we should be doing to really start making a change? Well, I think, first of all, believe that good things will be ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Trust Mm -hmm. your family, especially, and friends, the people who you really think that want the best for you, and listen to them that the people that want tell you, you know, give you advice, you know, and uh, and believe that hard work, that if you if you try really hard something, the good things will come your way. I really believe in it that that uh, perseverance and hard work eventually pays off. Sometimes you have to wait a long time. And I, I remember those days. And when you're in those days, it seems like it's never coming, you know. But yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And believe in that. I think that's the most important thing. And if you're, if you can honestly tell yourself that you worked hard and you tried hard, keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And the good, good things will come to you. So to summarize what I think you're saying and make sure I'm getting this right, you're saying uh, having a belief in something that's realistic, that can really happen in the future is critically important. And then also really leaning on and trusting your friends, family, whoever's closest to you and loves you most, that they have your best interest at heart and, and listening to them because the fog may be over your eyes. So trusting them to say, hey, give me some advice on where I should go next. And then number three would be, Hard work and perseverance. Start taking steps and don't stop moving forward. And if you take a step back or someone else does for you, like you did with the uh, discrimination issue, with that, that championship you were after, somebody pushed you a step back and you would think, boy, all that hard work, what happened? But you kept moving forward and things play out. Absolutely. You summarize it perfectly. Thank you. Susan, you are fantastic. I can't thank you enough for helping us answer our five questions. I love what you're doing in life. It's phenomenal what you've already done. I can't wait to see what's next for you. I can't wait to see the next book. There's so many things. So tell us um, where we can find you. If we want to follow you, social media, websites, where we can pick up a copy of the books, etc. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Susan Polgar, uh, on Facebook, uh, Polgar Chess. And, uh, of course, uh, you can go to my blog, chessdailynews.com, okay. or my website, susanpolgar.com. Website, one more time. susanpolgar.com. Oh, got it. Okay, sorry. So, it's S-U-S-A-N-P-O-L-G-A-R.com, 
And you can also Google her name, and she is all over the place. Twitter, Wikipedia, lots of news articles and stories. So, Susan, it's fantastic talking to you. We always ask this on the way out. I think you've seen it there on your show notes. Is there a uh, piece of music or song or artist that you just think of when you are driving along, heading home, and you've got to put something in your head to get the shake the funk off of the clouds and get you back in gear? What are you going to listen to? Uh, <laughs> it really depends on my mood. I I love ABBA, for example, yeah, uh, from great. the old old days. Or you know, I love Italian music. Uh, uh, Italian music. So, what's a band? Or are you thinking Al- Albano and Romina Parr, for example? Great. It's you know, but it, it depends. It it could be also Adele. Oh, yeah. Uh, From the more current ones, for example. (laughs) You're picking some good ones. I've always thought it's fun to ask people that question, and I've never been able to ask a a chess grandmaster what she jams out to. (laughs) (laughs) It really depends on my mood. I can be in a mood for Latin music as well, or classical music, you know, but uh, it it really depends. That's great. All right, Susan, thank you so much for your time, and um, I really appreciate your time today talking to us about hope. Thank you. And for everybody out there, believe in hope. There is one. Fantastic. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. All right. Great job. What are you worried about edits for? You just killed it. That's incredible. <laughs> I love your accent, too. Uh, <laughs> that's never going to go away, I think. <laughs> All right. Give me, um, We at the very end, I need a couple of quotes. Um, and I think Doug Goldstein actually gave us an introduction for you and... Um, David, if I'm remembering correctly, David, your editor, uh, um, publisher, David uh, Hancock. All right. Uh, both those guys mentioned your name and said what a great interview you'd be. And, and they're absolutely right. I'm going to send him a thank you note here in a minute. Um, so I need to get a clip that says, uh, I'm Susan Polgar and I share hope. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, that's you saying it. Oh, okay. I'm Susan Polgar and I share hope. Beautiful. I love your accent. All right. When did you come to America? How old were you? Uh, it was exactly 20 years ago. So okay. I was Fantastic. 25. That's great. Um, all right. And then uh, Delilah. Is is Delilah her real name? If you were going to introduce her no. and say... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Her real name is Delilah. Uh, okay. I don't, if she's got another name, I don't want to air it. I'm just uh, making sure you can introduce her the right way. If you were going to introduce her and say, I'm Susan Polgar... And just, I'd love for you to say, I'm Susan Polgar, and give some kind of tag to who you are in case someone doesn't know. Um, world champion, chess master, whatever you want to say, whatever the best mm-hmm. title for you is. I'm Susan Polgar, title, mm-hmm. and you're about to hear from Delilah. And um, we use those. If she says yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's really fun to know whose relationship connected who for the listeners to oh, okay. see how people fit together in life. I'm Susan Polgar, a world chess champion and a coach of the number one ranked collegiate chess team in the United States, Webster University. And you are now you're going to hear from Delilah. I love it. That was great. That was great. You feel good about that? You was it a little time? clumsy at the end? You, you clipped I one felt... there, but I, I can edit that. You want to try it one more time? Try yeah, sure. Yeah, go for it. I'm Susan Polgar, world chess champion and the head coach of the number one ranked collegiate chess team in the United States, Webster University. And now you'll hear. (laughs) (laughs) And now, okay, let me just say from the second part. Good part. And now you'll hear from Delilah. Perfect. You know what? Maybe I, should I say that my good friend or no? Oh, I think that's even better. It began, again, you you nailed it. Everybody talks about relationships. And I think... Um, yeah, maybe I should add that, right? So so start with the second okay. part. And okay. now you're going to hear it. Yeah. Let, let me just try again. Okay. okay. I'm Susan Polgar, world chess champion and the head coach of the Webster University chess team. Now you're here from my dear friend, Delilah. I love it. Okay, that's you, better. <laughs> you just nailed that Smoother. one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Susan, okay, so here's, is there anybody else? And I'm really focused on, uh, this is going to sound like I'm screening people, but I am. We have this list that's just growing rapidly from all these referrals that are people like you saying, you got to talk to this person, I can get you in. Um, There are so many, and I I mean this respectfully, but I, I have to think this through. 
there's so many white males on this list. And as a white male, uh, I am watching this thing and saying, wow, there really is a waiting of where maybe the ease of getting to success or breaking through barriers that needs to be addressed because I don't want to get interviews from a bunch of white guys saying how successful they've become and beaten the odds or whatever. So I have another suggestion for yeah, you. Another dear for, friend of mine. It can be anybody Her? who's not a white male. That's the rule. She's not. <laughs> okay. She's not only not, not only not male. She's not white either. Perfect. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Amy Bolin. Amy Bolin. B o w l l a n. Uh, mm -hmm. She used to work for uh, I think it was New York One or ABC or one of the the networks in New York, and. Uh, she she's a cancer survivor so she has that as aspect to talk about wow. and she she's such a phenomenal uh, communicator as well currently she's uh, works at the Hewlett school in New York City wow. uh, so she's I think teaching and deals with communication and then those type of things but if the cancer aspect is interesting and obviously she's a minority Yes, the cancer aspect is interesting because there's a lot of men and women impacted by that but particularly women and that's in the news all the time so I think that's a really great one. Um, in fact, one of the interviews we're after right now, um, she said yes, but she's dealing with, uh, she's actually caring for her son who's got cancer. Um, mm. It just is all over the place. You know, we hear about it all the time. It's freaky. Yeah, yeah. yeah but she, she's really, she actually, if you Google her, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know which channel, don't remember, but they made actually a documentary about her. I wow. think like a 10 minute. So you can see that actually already online. I'll, I'll look her up. I really will. Yeah. So can you give me the same audio clip with her name? in there okay then we'll be wrapping it up I am Susan Polgar world chess champion and the head coach of the Webster University chess team now you'll hear from my dear friend Amy Bolin you're getting really good at that <laughs> okay <laughs> um, I think we're good to go how about this is there any way you can um, I will I will send you a thank you email for today's interview um, okay. a very short, simple one, but, um, giving a, enough of a connection so that you could forward that to somebody else. Okay. Um, and is there any way you can reply back to me and those two women saying, mm -hmm. Hey, Amy, I'd like to introduce you to Chris Williams. I just did right. an interview with him. Okay. And same with, Hey, Delilah, Chris Williams. Right. And I will reach out to both of them in the same exact style. I reached out to you in very short, simple, polite, and, um, they can do it as they please, because I know you are very busy and they are very busy, I'm sure, as well. Yeah, Delilah especially. She is I bet super she is. busy. <laughs> she's talking on every night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and then amazing. she has, I think, uh, like 12 children. And it's, it's are you crazy. serious? Natural? Yeah. Or did she adopt them? No, she has, I think, three of her own, and then she adopts. Every time she goes to Africa, her foundation is largely mostly functioning in uh, Ghana. Yeah. And every time she goes there to help the people, she feels sorry for another child and she adopts it, back. him Good or her. her. And it, it's it's a lot of drama, but uh, because most of those kids are, yeah. you know, Hard life. sick and, and different things. So. You know, um, I would love to talk to her. Heart. I'd love to talk to her about her connection in Ghana as well, because uh, a thousand leaders around the world I am eager to reach into different cultures and different um, nationalities and she would probably have needed connections that's a that's a hard to reach community and i'd love to talk to some leaders in that community as well because they have a very different story than americans oh yeah okay yeah i mean i think they would be both perfect for, for Good. your show i'll send you an email and you can reply back just jointly okay. and i will then uh i'll carbon copy you on my reply back to them so you'll be able to follow and make sure i'm not doing anything I shouldn't there. All right. Absolutely. Great. Susan, Thanks great. so much. Thank and, you for your and good time. luck with the program and everything. I'll let you so, know when so it's how, how yeah. will people be able to actually listen to it? They just go to the iShareHope.com? Sure. What? So um, do you have an iPhone? Yeah. Okay, great. So if you have an iPhone or anything that plays MP3s, any little digital player, mm -hmm. you can go to the iShareHope website, which again is... Oh, so it's not going to be on, on the internet like oh, that. Oh, it is. It's going to be um, on the iShareHope website. All the podcast episodes, your name, et cetera, will be listed. And, mm -hmm. um, and the main themes in your podcast and a brief bio about you and your picture, et cetera. And then, um, and before we do that, we'll ask for the, uh, the picture you want to use. Um, but mm -hmm. then we will take and, um, 
and also launch that on uh, iTunes and Stitcher and several other places that just simply hold the podcast. So when you log on your iPhone and go to iTunes, you can look through your podcast there and it'll be right there. And mm. all the episodes from I Share Hope will be on your iPhone as well. So you can listen to all the other interviews as well. So it's a really So will it, be, will it be free for people free. to listen? Yes, to? ma'am. Yeah. So how do you function I, um, if, if everything is free? <laughs> I've been um, blessed with a lot of failure and a lot of success um, as an entrepreneur. So I've been involved in um, close to 20 businesses now in the past 15 years, own a financial advisory firm, uh, stepped away and let my business partner manage that back in 2011. And now I do private equity work and um, CEO consulting. So this has become. Oh, so this is on the side for this you. This is my. Like a you you mentioned my work. passion. You mentioned like, passion, and this is my passion. Right. I oh. had a hard background growing up, and a, a lot of depression and um, suicidal tendencies and uh, addiction issues. And in the healing process, seven or eight years ago, hope became just a theme that I was struggling to find. And once I finally grasped it, I thought, I've I've got to make sure people who are hurting understand there's a reason to stick around oh, that's that's very admirable and i congratulate you and uh, that's great great what you're doing it's so this is kind of like a non-profit work basically basically yeah this is just me and um i've had some great guys teach me how to do this i'm sure not a voiceover audio guy but um i've learned from some good ones and uh had a oh, lot of people great. helping me you're great i can't tell you enough how much i appreciate your time I know Absolutely. you're busy, and I really do well, appreciate thank it. you, and, and keep keep up the good work, and let me know if I can help. I'll send you the updates when we're ready to launch your podcast, so you'll know what's coming, and you'll be able to tell all your fans that uh, you're sharing hope. I'm sure they'd love to hear you, and then they'll be hearing, hopefully, some of your friends right after you. Thank you. Thanks. Take Talk care. to you later, Susan. Bye-bye. Yes, bye. You've just listened to I Share Hope. If you're ready to make a change, head to our website at ishareHope.com and claim your free copy of the top 10 actions of hope from world leaders to use hope in your own life. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.